all the carriageway information and parameters is the same as the carriageway, but this one thing is one piece. Why is it one piece? Well, the reason is simple. I wanted to create these uh, nice slopes above the curb and other layers. And uh, by making them like like here in two pieces, it's quite impossible to have these nice slopes and dynamic, uh, mm, just just dynamic uh, between these, if you had two different sub-assemblies. So I had to create one. And all the information, all the building up from the foundation is from the same carriageways and, well, a little bit of uh, shoulder as well. So how did I create this monsters? Let's take it. Let's take a look. It's, as you can see, it's quite laggy because it's a very big file. But here we are. As always, I start with the super elevation. If we defi look at the definitions, as you can see that I have delay, I have sub base, I have now a sidewalk super elevation as well as sidewalk super sub base super elevation. So now we ha can define four different things. Well, nothing special, but more things, it then means more a, a little bit more complicated as well. Here we are. We start off with the speed bump. As you can see, we can put yes or no on the speed bump. I click yes. And here is the speed bump. And speed bump. Well, yeah. You can define its. Uh, height by the elevation as well, by elevation target. I usually define the, as you can see it's lagging, uh, I usually define the speed bump um, elevation by with, with this feature line in the corridor, but you can do it on the profile, doesn't really matter. But yeah, basically we have the same carriageway right here but with some extra steps to create this uh, sidewalk right here. Well, let's start checking it out. As well as, as you can see, I have a bunch of auxiliary links and auxiliary points to create the idea, first of all. And then I start making the construction itself. I start off with the creating the pave shapes and links then I move on on creating the curb itself as you can see I have a curb right here depending on where you live the curbs can be different shapes here in Estonia we have this thing right here this size everything is defined by the specific numbers well because it's a standard for here but yeah Depending on your situation, you can make a different slope uh, in different uh, curves. So yeah, right here we have the curb. Curb has its own own uh, curb height default value. As you can see, uh, right now it's uh, let's make it zero point zero point five, and you can see that. Um, it's lagging a bit. As, as you can see, the older layers. Uh, above it, uh, I mean below it, uh, move in the static value. So, well, right here we have the uh, bedding layer, curb bedding layer, and uh, below it I want to have the base layer at least 20 centimeters. That so, I have defined these points to be static from these points right here. That was my approach on creating this uh, a, bit, a, a, bit, a little bit complex construction, but it's fine. It, it works. <laughs> well, yeah, here is a base one. I ended up the base layer right here, as you can see. And 
here we have the sidewalk base. So we usually have the different fractions. For example, here we used the gravel, uh, a bit smaller fraction. Here a bit bigger. Later on, when you're trying to, we're going to try export, for instance, the XML files or EFC files, then you can have two different uh, shape layers. So, yeah, as well as you can see uh, for the sub base and uh, all the other layers, it's everything is separated. You have to think a bit through how the uh, construction worker is going to bu build the whole thing. So you can basically make these layers the same way the construction worker is going to build them later on. So yeah, that's a lot of thinking, but by the end of the, end of the day, it, it works. <laughs> so let's keep on moving. Right here, we have other, another decision. Another, is it another speed bump? Yes. Why? I have no idea. Probably I wanted to make something or not. All right, doesn't matter. Well, it matters. I guess uh, the speed bump I added uh, later on when we had the project when where the we had this construction, but we needed to add a speed bump. So I didn't want to make a new construction. I had to implement the speed bump in this one. But since since the points are in a different, um, how I say that, uh, in different, uh, uh, on different levels. For instance, I needed these two points to work and this point to work. So I had to make uh, two decisions right here, speed bump right here and speed, speed bump right here. So when I use the speed bump option and click yes, then uh, everything works as intended. So yeah. That's the reason why I have the same decisions right here on different levels. But yeah. <laughs> and here we are with the uh, slope itself again. As I said before, slightly complicated, but uh, when you figure it out, then you're going to use it in every single project that you have. So, as you remember, it looks kind of the same. Well, First of all, we have the decision to uh, if there is a existing ground or not. If it's if there is an existing ground, then it's going to fall off these steps right there. If there is none, then we have another decision: is there a daylight elevation valid? If it if there is, it's going to fall off these values right there. If it's not, then it's going to fall off these values. And yeah, by the end of the day, they are going to reach one flowchart once again. Since they all are, as I mentioned before, all the same numbers with the same um, point numbers and link numbers. So you can create uh, further construction just with the same points. And here we are with uh, some other points to create some complex construction right here. Some bases, sidewalk bases, there is nothing special in these things, but as you can see, I have the filling material for the uh, roadway uh, for one elevation target rate. And then I have the filling material elevation for the sidewalk as well, as a different target options. Because you know, usually uh, below the sidewalk, you should uh, excavate a bit less than uh, below the uh, roadway. So I made a decision to make uh, two different possible targets. What else is I would like to show you right here? Well, I have two daylight slopes. I have a daylight inside slope as well, which is uh, this uh, slope right here. Just give me a second. Oh, no, it's working. Hope it works. <laughs> it worked yesterday. Ah, uh, here we go. 
so basically the point is uh, of these two slopes one slope is for the uh, daylight itself uh, where you're going to put your uh, growing uh, medium and everything and the other one is daylight inside so basically this line right here so depending on how the construction worker is going to excavate the materials uh, above the sidewalk he can excavate it in, in, in this one by one or he can make it by like you know 1.5 it depends but you know by the end of the day you have to calculate the uh, all the excavated materials and everything so that's a it's a good thing to have so yeah what else we can have right here well i have a safety strip as well so uh, the point of safety strip is that here in estonia we have this um, safety strip from the end of the line until the sidewalk some point so basically uh this width right here is uh uh 0 0.5 meters for instance i would like to make it uh, one meter and the safety strip will be going to be one meter we usually make safety strips from a uh, different material than the sidewalk itself for instance we have the sidewalk right here which you see is made out of uh, asphalt concrete and this one, the safety strip itself is made from stone, for example. So the point of the safety strip is not to walk right here, to keep yourself away from the carriageway itself. Well, th that's a small add-on to have. And yeah, you, you can have it, you cannot have it. Depending on the, the project, on the circumstances, that's a nice option to have. As well as well, uh, you have the bedding layer for the sidewalk as well. We can make sidewalks from the stones. So for the stones, you need the bedding layer. Well, if you're going to use the asphalt concrete, you can uh, type zero in the sidewalk. Uh, just give me a second. <laughs> in the sidewalk bedding layer. And it's gone. It should be gone. Yeah, it's gone. But uh, the the va as I mentioned before, the value is 0 0.001 just just in case not to have the zero values because later on it can uh, backfire at you because civil 3D doesn't like the zero points so yeah small cool construction <laughs> yeah, let's keep on moving and the last one is just a cool example that you can use as well let's take a look it's a pipe so basically that's a construction to use to uh, excavate materials for the pipes that you're going to put below the carriageway or any other construction doesn't matter where you would want to build that uh, yeah you can use the excavation materials as well as uh, filling materials later on depending on your circumstances once again here we have the bedding layer for the pipes and the base. Well, depending on the region where you live, the standards are different, but in Estonia we have something like this. And yeah, here we have different options. There is a pipe one, pipe two. You can uh, define the diameter of the pipes that you're going to use. And depending on the diameters of the pipes, it's going to calculate the uh, depth or the the width of the outside of the pipe till until the, until the, uh, the excavation uh, line right here. So yeah, simple construction, but it's quite useful when you're more into the beam and everything that's works around the beam so yeah simple construction as well we have the uh, target surface on the top 
why do we have target surface? Well, if you're just going to build pipes, then you can choose the target surface, uh, the uh, existing surface. But if you put this construction below the uh, roadway itself, then it's going to have the uh, surface from the road. Uh, the roads um, are most below layer, so I will show you just in a second. And yeah, the zero point is right here. So basically, if you're going to construct the uh, pipe, Pipeline. If you have two pipelines, just uh, like this, then one value is going to get from the, for, for instance, from the, um, uh, from the profile view or the uh, future line, and the other point is going to get uh, from the, as well from the future line or something else. Just depending on your situation. Usually they're just together on the one elevation, but you know, everything can happen. So yeah. cool little construction. And right here, yeah, all the static, default values that you can use, like, you know, gap between two points or two, two pipes, as well as some other functions. Well, depending how far away you can take it, you can make everything right. <laughs> and right here we have this yes and no option as well. Usually we don't have more than two pipes like this under the carriageway. So we can have the, we call these binoculars, or we can just put no, and you're going to have uh, just uh, one, one pipe. So, cool little construction. And how does it everything look in uh, seal itself? Just give me a second. And here is the construction itself. As you can see, we had the carriageway with a shoulder. It has the slopes, depending. Where is the existing ground? As you can see, here is lower, here is higher. Right here we have the carriage wave with a sidewalk. Right here we have the safety strip. Here we don't have this one. As you can see, all the layers works as fine. And under the this part of the corridor, we have the pipe. As you can see, the pipe gets its elevations from the bottom surface of the carriageway. And yeah. As you can see, everything works as in intended. So yeah. I hope my this part of the tutorial was useful and yeah, good luck with your own sub-assemblies. <laughs>